Welcome back to another book highlight. Um, as you will have noticed from the title, we're now moving into book two, My Rival the King. And if you have the book or have read it online or in a hard copy, you will have noticed that my dedication in the beginning is to Broken Kings. And that's for two reasons. One, because the book is basically the story of David's heart trying to survive the path to the throne he was promised, a, a much more broken path than he was expecting. But the second reason for the dedication is for us. When we're anointed by God, we don't often assume that it will be as devastating as it ends up being. God is the author of what we're doing, so it'll be simple and glorious and we'll be protected, right? And yet, what do we know about David? Not only from his story in First and Second Samuel, but also the Psalms. We see brokenness. We see a man certain of God's promises, but also having to put one foot in front of the other every day in the midst of a path that didn't look like what he imagined. He walked through confusion and heartache that made him wonder if it was even worth it. The most miserable part of some devastations are when they come at the hands of others, which happens a lot in this world. We can't control other people, and if someone decides, as Saul did, to persecute or harm us, there's not much you can do to change them by force. In the beginning of the book, My Rival the King, Abiathar the priest sort of resets David's perspective by reminding him that it's not his job to change Saul. But still, David is grieving what Saul's choices are doing to him and everyone. David lost his wife, his home, his country, his reputation. And given the way David acted, we can tell that he wasn't trying to split the kingdom. He didn't want any of this to happen. All the deaths and exile, he didn't want it. My second novel explores uh, how, based on scriptural evidence, how David wrestled with confusion and grief, asking God, I know you promised, but why did it have to be this way? One of the first things we learn from this book is that we try to grapple way too much with the unfairness of our situation, and that makes us even more miserable because we panic in the midst of our pain and we try to manipulate to try to get things back to where they should be. But you can't change your Saul either. There isn't always a great reason for why things are happening this way or to you. When you're on your way to the promise of God and you're not sure if your heart will survive, remember the Lord. Bring all your writhing and tossing to God like David did, but then reset yourself on his faithfulness, on the fact that God is still good and has a good plan. What's next? How do I obey now? That's the question that's going to lead you forward. It's not always enjoyable, but we can always move forward by moving closer to the Lord. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to force circumstances to change or wallowing in them. David was wrestling, wondering why Saul was doing this, and, and he was surrounded by men who wanted to wallow or forcefully change things. This is hard when people are doing despicable things and, and you are stuck in the unfairness, but you can't stay there. Reset on who God is and ask him, what piece of the obedience puzzle do I have before me today? That will keep you moving forward as it did for David. And that is the theme of my rival, the king.